So first of all, I'm going to start off with injured players. I'm going to look at the key objectives of injury. Correct me if I'm wrong. Rehab the player in a safe, structured and professional manner. And that's not to say, let's stop having a joke and a laugh with him. That's to say, go through the thresholds, go through the book, do everything in a structured manner. Don't be pushing the player on too soon before he's going to re-injure it again. Especially with injuries such as an ACL injury, which was in the pitch of death. Improve the body composition, including the injured leg. Now, a lot of people think the injured leg, surely that's going to be at a disadvantage. Now, I think you can still train it, and you can train it using low, um, low resistance, usually from the beginning of injury, or some sort of, some sort of resistance, even if it's just isometric. It's taking so long, okay, there we go. Also, I think it's a brilliant time to create some sort of buy into the sports science and medicine department. Like I said at the start, that is when you've got that player, nine to five, they're there listening to you, they're not really speaking to friends, they're on the bed, they're in the gym, they're in the pool, they're doing upper body CV, they're your player. And that's why I think a lot of clubs in recent years have gone down that road of having a, a rehab fitness coach or just purely a rehab video because them players are dealing with that physio or that fitness coach solely day in day out. And I also think it's a really good time to develop some gym proficiency. I think how many times, and we'll probably see it now on deadline day, when you get players come in and they come in and they go in the gym and they, you know, they've been playing the game for 12 years and they can't squat or they can't RDL. But I think if you get a strong long term injury, then you can use that to develop those movements, the, the hinge, the pull, the squat. Um, in order to try to develop that gym proficiency to take into their career after the injury is done and really improve them as they're finishing that injury state. And then also, we want to, want to return them in an improved physiological and functional state. Now, with some injuries, that's not always the case, but my point I want to make here is that it's really the longer term injuries, and when I say longer term, it's probably greater than two months. I think if you probably get a hamstring injury and you're rushing the player back and you really need to come back to play in the cup final, then potentially the player might not be in a functional or physiological state that's improved. He's just able to fulfil the demands that you place on him. Now the physiology of injury, I think if you take an image of the player playing the game on a Saturday or a Tuesday, whatever day they're playing on, comparing it to that picture there of Sergio Aguero in bed, which Usually if they're injured and they're having an operation, they could easily be there for a couple of days. We've got a significant limitation in muscle contraction. We've also got a big decline in functional strength. We've got a reduction in local metabolic rate, a decline in insulin sensitivity, an increase in local fat deposition. So the player is effectively losing his ability to metabolize energy and getting fat. He's also decreasing muscle. Okay, so just for some of the studies on that, I'm just going to...